Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Mike McAvoy. Today I want to talk about tips for using a small volume nebulizer. So we use nebulizers typically to deliver bronchodilators, asthma, patients with COPD exacerbation, people with anaphylaxis, people with pneumonia, anyone who's wheezing. Although wheezing does not necessarily occur in everybody who needs a small volume nebulizer. So your local protocols will give you indications for use of it. I want to talk today about some tips for actually delivering nebulized medication to a patient. So we have our patient currently on some oxygen by nasal cannula. We're going to set up the small volume nebulizer. And for training purposes, I'm going to put saline in the device today to illustrate some of the use of it. So we'll take apart the nebulizer, we'll squirt a little bit of the medication, in this case saline, into the nebulizer. Put the cap back onto the nebulizer. And typically a T-piece is going to be inserted on top of the nebulizer with an extra piece to allow the medication to leave the nebulizer and then be inhaled back into the patient through the mouthpiece, which goes on the other end. And then the oxygen, or whatever gas is being used to power it, plugs into the bottom of the nebulizer. So we'll ask the patient to hold the nebulizer, and then we'll disconnect his oxygen and plug the nebulizer into the oxygen and turn it on to a flow rate, typically somewhere between six and eight liters per minute. You see now the nebulizer is distributing the medication. We'll ask the patient to put the nebulizer in his mouth. Now, this is a good question, flow rate. The faster the flow rate through the nebulizer, in other words, the higher you turn the liters per minute flow rate on your oxygen cylinder, the smaller the particles will be that the patient's inhaling. So if you want to deliver particles deep into the lungs, you need a flow rate that is greater than five liters per minute. If you could get this up to a flow rate of 10 liters per minute, you would get even smaller particles and get better deposition into the lungs. Less than five liters per minute delivers particles that are only going to go into the upper airways. So if I turn this flow rate up, you'll actually see at some point that it will pop off of the nebulizer. This piece here where it connects oftentimes is where it pops off. So I'm currently at 20 liters per minute. It has not popped off. If you could deliver the nebulizer, it goes faster, the particles are smaller, and they'll penetrate deeper into the lungs. Now, not all patients can actually tolerate having a nebulizer holding it. And so you may, at some point, have a patient who can't hold the nebulizer. If that's the case, you may choose to take an aerosol mask, put the mask on the patient with the nebulizer attached to it, and this mask would fit right onto the patient's face. You might not have an aerosol mask, but you probably have a non-rebreather mask. If you take the non-rebreather and you pull the non-rebreather piece out of the mask, you have a fitting that the nebulizer will fit right into. The mask can then be put on the patient's face so that the nebulizer can be administered without the patient holding it. If the patient's saturations are low while you're administering the nebulizer, you could take the nasal cannula that the patient was on, or perhaps you're using a capnography device that's a nasal cannula, and plug that into a second oxygen cylinder to deliver extra oxygen to the patient. You're not going to get 90 or 100% oxygen out of a nebulizer treatment because it's pulling and trained air from the atmosphere in in order to aerosolize the medication that's being delivered to the patient. 
Couple other things about a nebulizer, especially if you're using a mask, and that is the eyes of the patient can be irritated by the medication that you're delivering to them. So you wanna make sure that the mask is not leaking medication up into the patient's eyes. The second thing is, if you're giving a bronchodilator to a person who has an obstructive sort of pathology, you're going to see an increase in cough, an increase in mucus production, and probably an increase in wheezing as the airways begin to open up. That's a normal side effect and a desirable side effect of administering a bronchodilator to a patient. I'm Mike McAvoy. Thanks for watching Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. Be smart out there.